have to sit. They managed to buy a little bit of time in the mid game just to try and get well back into the game, but again, outscaled at a very, very, at a very, very fast pace. The Hecarim completely irrelevant, and they just need to really focus on the early game here, SHRC. Shore it up because it was very leaky that game. Oh, yeah, but. LGD, they've got flame for that top lane position. Of course, the switcheroo happening yet again here for LGD. Only went maybe a couple of weeks without that flame and now able just to hang out, help his team. And Janna going to be banned away once more. So far, same ban lists to come through. Cassidy, the only one that hasn't quite hit the bench yet. Cola probably looking to pick that one up, but no, going to be banned away on the blue side here. Very interesting. And Royal Club not actually mixing up their bans at all. There's one thing I want in the world. One thing only. Please grant me one wish, Atlas. I can I can help you. Maybe. I want to see flame on Kenneth. <laughs> All right, we'll see whether we can facilitate this as LeBlanc has been left back up again. That's going to mean a first pick Hecarim, though. And Imp, he just wants to get right back on that Callista. Yeah, they seem to have worked out some of the kinks. Okay, they, they got a kill at level two, so it warps the laning phase, perhaps. We haven't seen what uh, Imp YL on this Callista and support matchup looks like when they're even or behind, but ahead, they seem to have shored up a lot of their problems. Oh, yeah, and it's actually going to be the ban away of the Ari here. That was what LGD managed to first pick last time around, but not wanting to give that option to Royal Club, who put a lot of onus on that Hecarim, and not picking up that LeBlanc, who hit the bench last game. They are going to be able to take that one away in the third round of picks, and well, Oh dear, sort of flashbacks from last game, but he's going to try the Graves yet again. Okay, well, I mean, that was... I feel like the last one can be written off. You know, the level two kills, yep. it shouldn't be happening at the top level competitive play. So maybe he's still confident in the matchup. We know that, you know, he's he's still a temporary player. We're not sure if Nami is going to be joining the next team, the team next week. Hashtag we hope just Nami. to see the free Nami. Finally, look who else has crept through. It's the Nidalee. Yeah, Nidalee may be in the hands of Wayless here, but... They've already got Where our X side. Where is Nidalee going to go? Hmm. Not support Nidalee, as we do have a Thresh locked in, and Whaler's still thinking about what he wants to choose. Mid Nidalee is actually a very good pick here. We actually saw Pawn do the yeah. same thing against a LeBlanc. In the first early levels, you kind of question yourself, all right, all right, maybe this was a bad idea, but in terms of team fight, you have very similar poke uh, than LeBlanc, and you definitely outrange her in terms of range. So it's actually a decent matchup. You can live it with the uh, barrier and then just using the heal off cooldown. You can manage through it. And it's probably one of the safest AP Nidalee mid lane matchups. So it's going to be a mid lane Nidalee unless something really crazy happens on the LGD side. Yeah, potentially. But um, looks like there might be some crazy coming through on the Royal Club side as well. Uh, Zero is not looking for a support at the moment. He's looking for a mid laner. Uh-huh. Which is interesting, to say the least. So that is going to be a support LeBlanc. It's the Allen special. Loveling on his uh, support days. Love that support LeBlanc. It can definitely body Thresh. Of course, one of the best picks against Thresh was always Annie, because you could burst through the fairly low base stats of the Thresh. They're going for the same flavor here with the LeBlanc lockup. They're just trying to bully around this bottom lane. And what can you give better than the amount of burst you can get from this Graves LeBlanc bottom lane? Yeah, I mean... You think about hitting level 6, you got the double distortion plus buckshot collateral damage combo. I mean, if someone doesn't die, then they must be like, I don't know, a super tank there in the bottom lane somehow. But it's not going to be coming through here as, as it is going to be Thresh and Callista there for the bottom side of the map. And man, Flame, <coughs> and Flame locks in his uh, trademark rumble. His yeah. near, now trademark rumble. Not going to get the cannon. No Sorry, cannon. Papa Smithy. LGD, they love the Rumble, whether it's Acorn or Flame. They have to set up CC, but mostly through the Thresh and perhaps the Unburrow coming through from Rek'Sai. But yeah, this is a very interesting draft coming from Star and World Cup. I had a feeling they were going to throw a curveball just after getting yeah. decimated in that first game, but the support LeBlanc, that wasn't my first guess. Yeah, and they do have a lot of sort of follow-up from a very long distance here, what with the likes of, you know, the Onslaught of Shadows being able to cover a lot of ground. We have a look, Insec. He can safeguard into that sonic wave in order to cross the map really quickly. You've got Mimic Distortions coming through from the support LeBlanc here, not to mention Zerath with his ultimate at the same time. So they can follow up very, very effectively. And 
We'll see whether that's what their, their strategy is, just to have pick potential from an incredibly long distance. So Nidalee, she has a good laning matchup against the LeBlanc, not so much against the Zerath, so much ranged wave clear. Of course, Nidalee has to get into melee range to get any sort of wave clear going, especially in the early levels. So I do like the swap through. That does leave them with a support LeBlanc, but this is zero. His mechanics are excellent oh, on yeah. support. I have full confidence that he can play it, but it's definitely something a bit different coming through from Starhorn Royal Club. Yeah, and I'm just trying to remember whether it was zero who also had a few mid lane historical appearances, but I'm not entirely sure, so I'm not going to make any concrete observations, ladies and gentlemen. We know that he's a fantastic Thresh and definitely would have the mechanics in order to make this support LeBlanc work, and we'll see whether it does happen. It's the first time I was actually expecting potentially some Flandre action there in the top lane to come through with some top lane LeBlanc with a Trinity Force, but not happening this game. There was a potential. We, we all excited. had the dream, but... Uh. Uh, it's not Flandre, so it probably wasn't going to happen. I do like the fact that it's against the Thresh, because, you know, I mentioned the Annie Thresh matchup mm -hmm. that's an Annie's advantage. LeBlanc Thresh is very similar. It's one of those situations where focus the support, burst him down with a fairly low base stats in the early game. So I do like the fact that there's a lane that he can bully, and if it was a Leona or something, then the LeBlanc makes less sense. But in this situation, looking okay. Yeah, and I mean, Callista not too tanky herself early on in this matchup, so if they can get on top of her, who, which a LeBlanc can. I mean, you can distort and then mimic distort once again, even after she's hopped away. You've got a lot of flexibility with that ability, but flexibility with that ability. Mm -hmm. My goodness, that sounded ridiculous, but it's true. And you can get all sorts of interesting level one wards down, of course, with the distortion skilled at level one. You can get in, maybe get a Gromp ward just at such an early timing that it's not scouted by the enemy team. You have a lot of flexible options with support yeah, LeBlanc. There's a reason why Loveland loved to play it when he was on support, is that you have a lot of lane pressure, and you're giving a lot of lane pressure to an AD carry that was very a pressured last game. Of course, well fell behind on Graves. A lane bully with a lane bully support. The double lane bullies should be yeah. easier for Well to navigate, you know, the world champion AD carry and imp. If you can relieve some pressure and create some pressure, then the LeBlanc pick, I think, is justified. Well, it also depends on whether they do decide to answer with an equal Gromp start here as well. It all depends on how this lane shapes up, because if they have the experience advantage, maybe things can turn around in completely the opposite direction. I have to feel like communication was off just because they entered lanes so late. You have to think they got some experience from somewhere. So to die to a level two at yeah. this level of play was, was very surprising to me. I don't think it'll be recreated. Yeah, we'll see whether it is as we hop onto the Rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, finally onto the Rift with Starhorn Royal Club taking on LGD for our second matchup of this series. Already into this laning phase as Zero and PYL just swapping sides here and do have a little bit of a lane swap situation to begin things off here, Papa Smithy. Yeah, unfortunately we missed the very early machinations. We don't know where the wards were, but this is the result as PYL leads TBQ to the buff. They are going to be able to go for this steal here as well. Cola trying to make a nuisance of himself as TBQ's taking a lot of damage here from this blue buff, but... Gets devastatingly charged, but not quite going to find it. Nicola already had level 2. Just was trying to harass and potentially pick up the steal with the devastating charge. It's not quite smite damage, but it's deceptively high, even at level 1. Oh yeah, wasn't able to charge it up quite enough here as well. But if TBQ hadn't had that smite, maybe had have started off picking up that red buff there. But of course, 3 minutes into this game, not entirely sure about where he was towards the beginning. But you can see this bottom lane goes a whole lot better when you don't have an opposing two people. So it looks with. like LGD were the ones to initiate the lane swap just because they've, of course, moved their bottom lane to the top lane. They obviously did not want to go against the super lane bully, so I do like this. You know, m navigate away from the double lane bully LeBlanc Graves combo. Of course, we also have Rumble, who's much better in a 1v2 compared to a Hecarim, who doesn't even have flash, can't even look to open distance and flash away to maybe last or force an extra turret bolt onto the enemy. So in a lot of ways, LGD have significantly out-rotated uh, Starhorn Royal Club early, and that's why we see the jungle follow continuing from Hecarim. Yeah, super buddy system to come through. Teleport finally to come down here in this bottom side, but the wave is going to continue pushing out. Maybe a little bit late there from Flame, who will have to extend fairly far in order to get anything done here, and there are three extra members hanging out on the Royal Club side. And PYL is here, but still makes it a two versus four, which is not great odds. The Might Flame be. has a lot less wave clear than the usual time we see a 2v2 with a Thresh would be safer from Thresh Maokai, where Maokai has ranged wave clear and consistent wave clear with his Arcane Smash Q. On the other side, Rumble, 
especially if he's trying to CS with Flame Spinner at level one. Just no fun at all. Yeah, he's really looking just to try and sit back, farm with these harpoons, and pick up the experience that he can. It's mainly the experience that he wants here, because of course, Cola still struggling to pick up any farm. But it's a lot of respect to the pressure being put out by Graves, LeBlanc. This, that, you know, in another situation, you'd be like, all right, play the Rumble, 1v2, pick up as much experience as possible, don't worry about CS. They're only rotating as support to this lane and sapping some of that XP away from Flame just because they respect just the lane power out of the Starhorn Royal duo. Yeah, Insect hanging around in this top side. Cola taking a bunch of rends here as well, as you can see, getting slowed down by that one, taking a bit of poke damage as Imp. More than happy to chill out here on his own. TBQ hanging around the area as well, wanting to get some wards down so that this Callista doesn't get capitalized on. Insect may be found out here actually by TBQ, but nothing going to come from it. Cheeky Prey Seeker may be in towards that Grom. Yeah, we see the roams continue. Nothing too much happening in the game. Obviously, there was a lot of action at the start to prompt this lane swap, but the result, although Wells overextended a bit. Yeah, might be in trouble here as he gets hooked under the turret, but of course the turret's doing a fair bit of damage here at this six minute mark. Still has his heal and flash up, so is able to position it slightly more aggressively, even with his support going for a roaming duty. And you can see from the minimap, LeBlanc trying to get some aggressive wards down. Yeah, and also trying to get a bit of presence in other lanes here as well. POL going to find Zero, not wanting to try too much as well. in a lot of trouble again haphazardly positioned, and he's going to fall down for first blood here for PYL Zero, trying to turn this one around. The last Q, the Sigil not going to really find it, and again, LGD with first blood in this bottom side of the map. Yeah, Wells just having a shocker this series, in the first game dying at level 2, then going for on walkabout and dying with both his summoners up, blowing the heal. The flash wasn't going to save him. You know, Zero, he needs to feel empowered to be able to roam. Of course, he thought he was in a quite lane-dominating situation, but they were able to pick off a kill while he was roaming. The communication between this duo is just not working. Yeah, not having a great time here in this bottom side, and I don't know how he managed to get picked out quite that badly, but we'll see whether he can turn it around as this series progresses. Wayless and TBQ just hanging out together, clearing out some vision. Scuttle Crab not available just yet, but Wayless has had a fine time in this mid lane, not getting out farmed, able to shove in this Zerath pretty relentlessly, you can see on this Nidalee. Being able to shove in just shows how much he can disregard the map pressure coming through from both the, uh, the LeBlanc, who we just see distorting away from PYL, and from Insect's Lee Sin. F to feel enough, uh, to feel a lack of jungle pressure to the extent that you can get in melee range to clear waves against the Zerath shows just a complete disregard for all the aggression that's been picked by Starhorn Royal Club. Yeah, look at Flame's build choice here as well. Very early Sorcerer's Shoes after those first buy Cloth Armor. Insect now going to find TBQ here around the red buff. Might need to take that Dark Passage, and he is going to as Insect going to finish off his red buff here in peace. So not going to get that one stolen away. Definitely good news. Off screen, we actually Ooh. saw a turret dive coming through. The stun was, cl cl uh, was completely clutch coming through from Korn to survive. Very, very close, but... All summoners used from Korn. Yeah, there's the ultimate to come through, but Wayless, he's a little kitty cat. Pretty able to get away from things, but Zero going to lock him down there with the chain. The pound's going to be available pretty soon as Wayless really wants to dodge out of the way of that one. Sonic Wave going to get flashed out of, and Wayless is going to survive, but only barely. And it's lucky that the first Sonic Wave was attempted before the chain had hit from Zero. So, of course, could have waited for that cooldown and guaranteed the Sonic Wave. But the result, Wayless lives. Yeah, I'm not going to find it, but did have to blow that flash. You can see Rider of the Arcane was used by Korn as well. That one not going to be up for quite that long, and he was forced to flash in response. So even summon a exchange there in the mid lane, but you have to think that the pressure advantage in the 1v1 going to Wayless's advantage. The, the, the pressure in both 1v1s going to LGD's advantage. You can see Flame pushing aggressively on Graves. Well, not able to control this lane. Already seeded 20 CS advantage to Flame compared to his opposite number, Cola, and just doing very, very well in both solar lanes as LGD. And well, I mean, given the same situation here as Imp, Imp at 81 CS to 57 here as well. Imp just having oh. a free time. That's bad things at Brew Bottom. Setup. Yeah. Bad things not... Yeah, it's not going great here for Wellforce. Use that flash out of the equalizer, the teleport to come through from Cola, but that is a very defensive option, and... Well just seems to need a, a helping hand 
In whichever lane he's in at the moment, really struggling in these early stages. And the stat teleport completed. Cola definitely needs to help well push in and get any experience he can because they're going to lose so much turret damage in the top lane as we see the aggressive push coming on from Imp and PYL. Oh, Spear going to land on Insect here as TBQ comes back around. There's the super pounce onto Insect, who's been hunted. Zero takes half of his health from that Spear. Another super pounce to come in, but straight into a stun. Oh, the Spear lands on Korn. He's mixing them up onto as many members as he can. Wayless just assumes Korn's dead, as he doesn't really bother to do too much. He just gets burnt down here by PYL, and... Wayless is playing so aggressively this series. And three different members of Starhound Royal Club were in imminent danger of damage, of dying. First it was Insect, then Zero. Finally it ends up with Korn, who falls to the sniper flash death sentence coming through from, from uh, PYL. It's all coming for LGD, oh but Flame dies in goodness. the 1v1. Yep, Cola with some sweet plays there on the bottom side of the map. Saves that ultimate beautifully to secure the kill in the fear. There's some lovely irony about Flame dying to a top laner having Ignite. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. If only he was canon, Papa Smithy. If only. Flame's just thinking, I need the Ignite. Please bring him back. <laughs> Unfortunately, that first pick hacker I'm working out here for Royal Club did have to use his uh, Ignite in order to pick up that kill and of course, Flame is going to be okay. Of course, still has quite a considerable CS advantage, but Cola going to be able to make use of that extra kill as the Spear going to go wide here in the mid lane as Wayless tries to create some pressure. Equalizer here in the mid as well as Insect takes a fair bit of damage, gets slowed down here as well. There's a Chilling Smite, and I have to think that that Spear is going to spell the death of Insect, which it does. Corn now in a lot of trouble. Harpoon's going to slow him down as he overheats. These auto attacks doing so much work. Spear not going to land. Heal may have actually saved Corn's life, but there's no turret here, and he's just getting burnt down. TBQ gets the double on Burrow here, and Cola, you are in so much trouble. Wayless now just having his way with this Royal Club lineup. And I love how PYO completely disrespecting any of Imp's requests to group and use the Fates call or the passive on the W. He's roaming and you can see why the flay to cancel the escape from Cola was beautiful. And the kills just rack up for LGD. Yeah, and you know, Imp, he's got a level advantage here. I mean, he's 30 CS in the lead, going for the same build once again, wants to grab that Bloodthirster as soon as possible. You can see, well, forced once again to go into that Pickaxe Brutalizer build. Looking very behind at this stage of the game as well as pretty low on mana, but they're looking to possibly put some pressure on this bottom side of the map. Zero, fairly overextended well again. He's just getting picked on. Death Sentence out of nowhere. Beautiful aim coming through from PYL, and he makes it look easy here in the bottom side. The Death Sentence highlight reel for PYL, even if it's just this game, is going to be so, so impressive as well. Dies once again to a roam gank, whether it's uh, the jungler or the support. He's just a hook magnet, and it should be a dragon through for LGD. Now, I mean, the quick draw came through trying to get him out of it, but of course, PYL, you're not going to trick him. Playing beautifully. Right of the Arcane looking to try and steal away, but doesn't get it, of course. Imp with the rend, able to secure the most hearty of objectives. And actually quite a late first dragon. Actually the first dragon between both teams coming through yeah. from LGD. It feels like with the pressure lead they've had, it's been four kills, five kills to one for a long time. They could have taken an early one, but they're going to pick up the red buff as well for another neutral. And suddenly Korn's looking a bit overextended. Oh, the shocking all going to land, but that's not the right target. It's oh, oh, another <laughs> one! Oh my goodness, PYL is a god. Let me tell you one thing. He knew that Korn had flash up there, that's for sure. Oh man, beautiful stuff. We're just getting mad lives across the board. I'm going to have to check his PC for aimbot after this game because he's hitting all those hooks. Oh, just check to see his seat, see whether mad life's sitting there or not. Of course, Zero has been described as the mad life of China. Or mad life 2.0, of course. Originally, it feels Korean. like someone just told PYL about that because he's not listening to that particular. Oh yeah, I just completely messed up. Of course, it was Zero playing the Thresh in the last game. I mean, Zero's Thresh—you have to remember yeah, some it's massive fantastic, performances. But PYL showing him up this he, game. He was being banned away from. He had it last game, but again, night and day between the two Threshes. PYL so on form, and now well, just stuck under his turret, can't even find a safe place to farm. Yeah, and I apologize for getting that wrong, but it's almost like PYL has something to prove here. I mean, hearing. All of this talk, especially from us, about you know Zero being this fantastic Thresh, but PYL really putting it on today. I guess Zero is just looking forward to getting an 80 carry that opens up his Jhana play. A wonderful Jhana, <laughs> but HYY and Well, 
You know, sometimes they haven't necessarily stuck out, but in this series especially, Imp has just run all over well. Yeah, and his Callista's just looked so much better than it has in the past, of course. Had sort of mixed results on this Callista. Has found some fantastic games, but you have to think that some of them have left a little bit to be desired. But thus far, it feels like he's found the build that he wants. Of course, he's 50 CS in the lead even more. It's just ridiculous here. Building that Bloodthirster already is zero. Able to use that distortion in order to get a ward into this brush, but doesn't even last. No, and unfortunately, Star Han Royal Club, they, they had some interesting things about the comp. It looked like they would be competitive this game, but it's just feeling very reminiscent of last game. It's once again, Korn's on a wave clear champion, staying back as Wayless has completely overtaken this mid lane. Not a big CS advantage, but they have to respect the amount of pressure. Rek'Sai and PYL in particular with his rotations. 2-0-4, almost 100% kill participation as the turret falls. And things just keep going from bad to worse for Star Horn Royal Club. Yeah, and I mean, this is a, a performance from Korn that we would not expect. He's played fantastically thus far. I mean, almost despite how things have been going here in the LPL, as far as, you know, the AD carry situation, the free Name situation, Korn has always been solid, but this game, 0-3-0, falling behind to a Nidalee matchup that... You know, he could have potentially bullied here with his extra range, but not happening this time. But when the roam is so easy from PYL, no pressure being put out from well on the grave, so able to roam even with a Callista so happily on this Thresh. There's been map pressure so consistently on Korn. He's had to use his flash multiple times. He's been zerged down and killed 0-3-0 on the Xerath. If you're going to pick these artillery champions, these long-range wave clear champions, and get mercilessly get you need map pressure. But Insect and Star World Cup haven't been able to pick out that, and Insect's in trouble. Yeah, that's the Chilling Smite going to be used. That safeguard didn't get him too far, but he is going to flash over this wall. Rider the Arcane tries to come through. Shocking Orb may have saved Insect's life as Cola comes around. The savior here for Royal Club as Wayless now in a bit of trouble. This horse is pretty big with his phage. PYL and Imp, though, they found their way into this fight. Imp's going to be able to secure Corn, And LGD now pile onto Cola. Wayless picks up that kill with a pounce. Still continuing on here as well. Finally makes his way around the barrier, actually. There's the heal from Imp, and Wayless doesn't even die. Look at the pierce damage, the flash out of the way of the arrow there as well. And my gosh, LGD, it looked like they got caught. And that's not how it happens here this game. When you're ahead this far in goal, getting caught is just really a free initiation. Wayless is on a sliver of health, has to thank Imp for popping the heel. Man, Star on Royal Club. It could have been a big momentum change coming through, but just not enough. Yeah, and I mean, Cola capitalizing on the fact that he got that early kill, but with only Merc Treads and a Phage, I mean just don't have the impact in these fights, nor do you have the tankiness. I mean, Cole has definitely been the standout player consistently for Star Horn Royal Club during this split. On Hecarim twice, on a champion with such a long ramp up compared to Flame, who has, you know, one item, two item, cheap power spikes uh, on this rumble, whether it was Flame or Acorn. I mean, unfortunately, Cola, he's been have to, having to play reactive. They're picking these reactive long range uh, mages in the mid lane, and if you have both your solos who've been really the standouts for Star Wars World Club so far this season on reactive champions, you can't be surprised when your bottom lane goes poorly and you just can't get back into a game. Yeah, and it's just, it's going from bad to worse. Imp actually now with an 80 CS lead. His bottom side of the map at 18 minutes into the game. And no com big completed item to speak of any time in the future coming through from well with the, just the pickaxe and the... Uh, the Brutalizer, he can't even afford a BF sword at this point. Yeah, he's 3,000 gold in the hole to, um, to imp at this stage. It's just terrifying coming through from LGD, and this is the world-class performance that we expect coming through from Imp. I mean, it doesn't happen every single game, but we get reminded every now and again that this guy is one of the best. Wayless actually going to get kicked back into Korn here as well. Flashes over the wall. He may even survive here, of course. Has that passive, actually goes aggressive. Flame's gonna take down Zero. Wayless just gonna hop out of the way as well. Corn solo, there he is, pouncing over the wall again. And Wayless is insane. The horse is gonna fall down. Another spear lands. There's the chilling smite, the pounce, the takedown. And Wayless is so good at Nidalee. Wayless is the god of mid lane, Nidalee. I thought it was pawn, but Wayless lives through all of that. His team is around to back him up. And LGD in top form as well. Shows up in the mid lane, probably did die to Imp. Yeah, that's Imp actually going to tank out that turret Four there a little bit. Four level difference between AD carries. Oh my goodness. It's like Well didn't even really turn up. It's one of those situations where it's like how AD carry was disconnected for like the do first they, 20 minutes of the game. Do they pause when AD carries don't join in the LPL? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. 
Things are looking very, very bad here for Royal Club as the next dragon going to be taken down. Wayless, he's pretty low on health, pretty low on mana, but he doesn't really care because they have so much control of this map. In the mid lane, Italy, DPS is down the jungle alone, doesn't even need TBQ to group. And it's just as landslide a victory as you could hope for. LG, they've done this before, but it's going to be a 20-minute surrender. You have to think home from Star and Royal Club. It was a surrender in the first game, but they're even further behind this time. 12,000 gold at 19 minutes. Yeah, and I guess this is a moment where you talk about whether or not that surrender is a good idea. It's 12,000 gold at 20 minutes, and is the 20-minute surrender now the opportunity here for Royal Club? Because... They can play out this game. They can try and stall, get a little bit more sort of, I don't know, action on this map, a little bit more, I don't know, in this game. But looks like the surrender vote is what's going to happen. 20 minutes. I, I mean, Atlas, no BF so completed for a Graves at 20 minutes. There was no coming back in this game. There was yeah. literally, it was, it was a mathematical game. If anything, it was just going to heat pressure onto a Star Royal Club. You have to remember the lineup, even with Uzi, was prone to having disagreements and flared discussions. It wasn't going to help the case to play, play this one out. And unfortunately, Star and Royal Club completely outclassed by LGD today. Yeah, and just looking to try and keep their morale as well in check. So making sure they get out of this negative situation, go back to the drawing board, and then focus on their next matchup, what they did wrong in this particular matchup, and then move forward from there. And of course, with the potential of Name coming in next... Uh, Next week as well, they may have been using Name in their most recent scrims Well, not quite getting a look in, and it might have made things difficult here for Royal well, We don't like to talk too much about the rumor, Vil, but the, the rumor is they split they split scrims half and half okay. between Name and not Name. And the other latest news is that perhaps Name won't be playing next oh, week. So goodness me. when they're looking at the calendar and the, as their only real hope, you know, not even looking towards their scrims or perhaps their next games and thinking about how to win, but you know, just kind of longingly looking at the calendar, it's a it's a really worrying spot for Star and Royal Club as that was perhaps the least competitive series so far in the LPL against who started this with so much to win, ninth, ninth the potential to jump to sixth, but wasn't to be this series. Yeah, looking a little bit frightening here, but we, of course, still have much more LPL on the way, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see whether the next matchup's going to be a little bit longer than this one, but stick around. We'll have a short break, and we'll be back very soon.